Welcome back, folks. We had the Dow finish up 33, NASDAQ up 2, S&P's up 2. Uh, our guest today, folks, is Chris Powell. Uh, Chris is the managing editor of uh, the Journal Inquirer in Manchester, Connecticut. Uh, he's been working there, it's a beautiful thing, since high school, since 1967. He is also the co-founder of the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, which is GATA. And, you know, depending uh, if you've been listening the last few weeks, well, first we had Richard Love on, then we had Bob Chilton on. Um, as you come over to our website at TFNN, folks, you're going to see right into breaking news. Uh, Chris had a, a remarkable speech and remarks um, in London on October 10th. And I posted that speech um, and print it, read it, and... You may be weeping after you read it, but you won't be weeping. I think it's going to empower you. Chris Paul, w welcome to TFNN. Thanks for having me here, Tom. You know, um, Chris, it, it's pretty amazing. You know, I, I remember um, I've had Bill Murphy on a few times. Of course, you know, uh, being from Boston, he used to play for the Boston Patriots. That was pretty, pretty wild. And I know uh, what I'd like you to do is start us at the beginning, because I know when you guys started this out, you started... Um, you know, that ES was an antitrust deal, but it's turned into something much bigger, hasn't it? Yeah, we uh, began to realize, actually Bill did, he was the first to see this, that uh, the gold market, uh, the gold futures market was being tampered with. Uh, it looked like it was being suppressed uh, over the long term by the same big investment houses in New York acting in collusion. And uh, he... Uh, began writing about this at his internet uh, site of financial commentary, lametropolecafe.com. And I had started following the gold market and was very quickly drawn to, to his site. Uh, but I happened to know something about antitrust law because of my work at the, the newspaper. And so okay. I told him that uh, if everything he was writing about was true, and he certainly seemed to have a lot of evidence for what he was saying, uh, what was being done was a violation of the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act and 50 state antitrust acts, and somebody ought to form a committee and uh, hire a law firm on a contingency basis to sue the bastards for triple damages under antitrust law. And, okay. Uh, he thought that was a good idea, so we, uh, we did so, but it uh, uh, was not too long after we began to realize that the investment houses that we were identifying as intervening against the gold price we're, we're really doing it on behalf of uh, the US government and and other western central banks that they were merely the agents of uh, the western gold price uh, suppression scheme which had manifested itself in, in various forms over the years and it just evolved into something more more surreptitious but it took us a year or two before we began to to, to, to get the, the complete outlines of it, that it was not the usual antitrust scheme uh, that uh, the government moves uh, against, that it was the government acting through intermediaries. Now, can you, uh, what, I, what I'd like you to, to explain to us, right, uh, gold swaps. What exactly is a gold swap? A gold swap uh, is typically an exchange of gold between two central banks uh, that are, uh, colluding to intervene in the gold market uh, and want to uh, conceal the identity of the uh, the central bank that most wants to uh, to intervene. Uh, for example, uh, uh, if the United States uh, wants to uh, hold the gold price at a certain level in order to support the the dollar or support the euro, um, it might call up the German central bank, the Bundesbank, and say, "Listen, uh, in order to rig the currency markets over the next month uh, the way we would like them to be. We we need to sell 50 tons of gold in, uh, in London, which is the, the main physical gold market in the world. Sure. And uh, you, the Bundesbank, have a lot of your gold parked there. Would you please sell 50 tons of it on this particular schedule over the next month? And in exchange uh, for your doing that, we will give you title to an equivalent amount, equivalent amount of gold uh, stored here in the United States at uh, the New York Fed, perhaps, or the uh, West Point uh, Bullion uh, uh, Vault uh, in uh, upstate New York or, or at Fort Knox. Uh, in this way, the United States uh, gets to uh, intervene in the gold market without shipping uh, a lot of its gold uh, 
uh, over to London as it did during the 1960s when the London Gold Pool was operating, and uh, it makes the uh, the Bundesbank look like the actor in the gold market. Yes, uh, keeping the hands free, happens. right? Yeah, it just just conceals the uh, the U.S. policy in, in, in the whole operation. Well, you know, it's interesting when I had, and folks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these interviews together um, so you'll be able to basically go over all of them if you haven't listened to them. I asked um, uh, Bart Chilton, who is the you know a C CFTC commissioner, about the uh, the silver manipulation and the amount of contracts, and what he said is that he thought that at this particular point um, that they had been talking about it, they were going to get it down to 10,000 contracts. But I says, well, okay, so what else has to happen? He says, well, he says we have this one um, um, swap issue that we have to get over. And, you know, as soon as I heard that, I says, oh, this is going to be amazing. Because I, 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 from what I'm gathering from here and from him and from you, the swap issue could be larger than even contract issues, couldn't it? Oh yes, you know we we don't really know uh, whose positions are whose in in these markets. They're uh, very uh, obscured. Uh, the government documentation is uh, incomplete, at least the documentation that's uh, that's reported. But we we do know that uh, some uh, uh, very large investment banks are the uh, primary players, uh, and in, in regard to silver, almost certainly. J.P. Morgan Chase is the biggest uh, player in the silver market and is likely operating there uh, as the agent of the U.S. government. Now, you know, in, in the paper that I'm referring to, folks, that um, Chris spoke on, and it's right under breaking news, um, number one, please print it, okay, because I know there's plenty of folks that, that are out there, you know, and when you hear whether the government wants to suppress this, the government wants to suppress that, um, you know, this, this folks that will believe it, the folks that will say, hey, you know, that isn't going to happen. Well, the, the, this is not f fantasy, folks, okay? Uh, there's, there's, there's documents on there, and we're talking about documents right from the Federal Reserve. We're talking about documents from the courts. They're, they're, they're real facts. This is not, we're not talking fantasy here. Um, you know, Greenspan, I mean, the bottom line is that, and I'm saying this in a factual way, he's absolutely a hypocrite because when you look at the... Um, how when he came out of school, what he wrote versus what he did as a Fed chairman. Uh, but you, uh, on one of the gold suppression schemes, this is a quote from Greenspan, folks, okay, and, and that, that Gata found in 1998. Central banks stand ready to lease gold in increasing quantities should the price rise. And that, that was a contradiction, what he was talking about, about leasing gold earlier, right? Yeah, Greenspan was on the record as, uh, as saying that... Uh uh, at least the Fed, anyway, was was staying out of the uh, the gold market, and then he went to testify to Congress in 1998, uh, uh, trying to discourage Congress from regulating uh, uh, derivatives. And uh, as part of his argument against regulating derivatives, he he basically told Congress, "Don't worry about the gold market. Uh, we central bank bankers have got the gold market under control with with gold leasing. Uh, right. If uh, the gold price." Uh, is in danger of going up too much, we will uh, lease some more gold. And this contradicted the standard central bank explanation for gold leasing, which was to uh, make some money on a supposedly dead asset from the interest that was paid on gold leases. Uh, Greenspan spilled the beans in his testimony to Congress. He explained that the real purpose of gold leasing was not to make uh, some money for central banks on uh, by putting a dead asset to, to work, the real purpose of gold leasing was to keep the price down. Now, when we when we look at the context of where you started with GATA, meaning that, because we're going back now, uh, what, we're going back uh, 12 years, aren't we? Yes, that's right. We're going back 12 years. As to where we are right now, the, uh, you know, the gold price has certainly come up dramatically, $282 or 252 to um Seventeen hundred and forty-eight. You know, it's hit nineteen hundred. Are central banks still holding the price down? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, we have long argued that uh, the Western central banks are uh, undertaking what we call a, a controlled retreat with the gold price. Uh, if uh, if we had a free market in gold tomorrow, and the world realized that you know perhaps fifty or sixty or seventy or even eighty percent 
of the gold that it thinks it's own, it owns does not really exist, that it's really just uh, paper promises of gold uh, uh, held by the bullion banks in London because most gold investors don't take delivery of their metal. But if the gold, gold world, the gold investing world ever realized that most of the gold it thinks it owns is imaginary, doesn't exist, if that happened on any single day, the, uh, the gold market would explode. There would be a a short squeeze that would drive the gold price to uh, just astronomical uh, levels. So uh, central banks are uh, still tampering with the gold price through swaps and uh, and leases in order to uh, control the ascent of gold and to control the uh, devaluation of uh, their own currencies. Uh, uh, they can't, uh, I think, defeat gold over the long term because there's just as... Uh, uh, too much of a short position that uh, just can't be, be covered. But in the short term, uh, in the paper markets where most people trade, uh, the central banks uh, having access to infinite money, uh, they, they definitely can, can slow the ascent of the gold price. Isn't this more about uh, an absolute control of people and societies? You know, because when, when I'm reading your paper, right, and, and by the way, th that had to be an outstanding speech. I'd love to see it. I, I, I'm going to make sure I see your next speech, okay, because I read this, and it's just dynamite. Well, uh, it reads better than I'm sure I delivered. Well, it, it was dynamite. Uh, and, and, and to that point, right, when you read that speech, this is just not the United States. I mean, this is the United States. This is, you could say, you know, I saw the pot in China. But all powers, all government powers, it looks to me like this is um, really uh, a control mechanism. And not just for, you know, if you control the currencies, of course, you control everything. But it's, it's a controlling aspect. Oh, yeah. The, this, the, the, the currency markets are how the world is, is controlled. And, in fact, uh, uh, one of the documents that I think I cited in that, that speech uh, was the November 1943 edition of the uh, U.S. War Department uh, intelligence letter, uh, Tactical and Technical Trends, which was a, a detailed review of uh, currency uh, policy in Nazi-occupied Europe. And it showed how uh, uh, the Nazi occupation of Europe uh, looted Europe not uh, in the way that we commonly think, that is, at the point of guns and and bayonets, but through control of the currency markets. Uh, if uh, uh, you control the currency market, you can turn everybody in that currency zone into your slave much yes. more efficiently than you can by uh, running through the streets with uh, with guns and and bayonets. Uh, controlling the currency markets is the uh, uh, primary mechanism of imperialism. It was then during World War II. It, it is again today. Uh, if the United States uh, controls the currency markets, it controls the world, and that's how we manage to run such an enormous trade deficit uh, in the United States uh, is because we issue the reserve currency of the world, the, uh, the dollar, and we control its uh, value by rigging the currency markets and uh, preventing the uh, uh, the dollar's value from uh, collapsing against uh, other currencies, and particularly against the the one genuine uh, neutral inter international currency against gold. You know, the um, when you you've gone after the uh, information on the Freedom of Information Act many times, and it seems that uh, whether you know it's a judge, whether it's the Fed itself, uh, you've run into a bunch of walls, uh, and in that context. It was interesting, you know, when we went through the financial debacle in 2007, 2008, uh, you know, Bloomberg News, okay, they ran into the same walls. Now, of course, Bloomberg News, you know, and hopefully after this interview, you guys will, you know, get some donations over at GATA. Uh, but Bloomberg News, of course, has billions of dollars, and they got them released. And that, that must have been an eye-opener for you as to how... Yes, yeah, Bloomberg had great success uh, defeating the Fed uh, in its Freedom of Information Act lawsuit, but we... We did the same uh, in our um, uh, Freedom of Information Act lawsuit against the Fed last year. We also got a federal judge uh, for uh, the U.S. <coughs> excuse me, uh, District Court in the District of Columbia to order the Fed to uh, disclose to us one of its gold documents. Yes. We were seeking 
a lot of gold documents, and the, the, the judge unfortunately ruled that many of those gold documents could be withheld, but she ordered one of those uh, uh, documents uh, released to us, and it uh, was the minutes of the uh, G10 Gold and Foreign Exchange uh, Committee meeting, I think of April 1997, and it, it showed the uh, Western Central Bankers and uh, Treasury Department officials uh, conspiring secretly to uh, rig the gold market. Now, um, now, is that against the law? Well, uh, when governments do it, apparently not. Uh, uh, but okay. uh, uh, nevertheless, the, the Fed, uh, Fed's withholding that document from us was ruled illegal by the judge, and uh, uh, the uh, court uh, ordered the Fed to uh, pay us uh, about $2,800 in court costs because, like Bloomberg, we defeated the Fed in uh, U.S. District Court and uh, obtained some information the Fed did not want to disclose. Of course, you, you had to be psyched on that for sure, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the, our, our lawsuit uh, proved a couple of things. Uh, it, it proved uh, in the document uh, whose disclosure we won uh, that uh, the central banks are meeting uh, secretly to control the gold market. And uh, I think we won even in uh, regard to the documents the uh, court would not order the Fed to disclose because it, uh, the case showed that the Fed has many documents involving gold that it insists uh, uh, be kept secret. In fact, during the, uh, uh, the litigation, we uh, received a letter from um, a member of the Fed's Board of Governors, Kevin M. Warsh, who was acting as a uh, sort of hearing officer on our freedom of information request uh, while it was being adjudicated, adjudicated within the Fed itself. And Warsh disclosed uh, in a letter to our lawyers, it's posted on our Internet site, another one of the many documents we've, we've published, that the Fed has secret gold swap arrangements with foreign banks uh, that it insists must uh, remain secret. So we've gotten admission from a member of the Fed's Board of Governors that the Fed is secretly involved in the gold market. Uh, public document, public record, uh, it's uh, it's on our internet site. There's really there's no disputing it. All this stuff that we're talking about uh, is based on uh, on public record. Uh, uh, any serious journalist who wanted to get into the gold issue yes. uh, would not uh, have to work very hard to put a question about gold to uh, the Fed or the Treasury or some other central bank in the West that they would not answer because it would disclose the. Uh, secret intervention in the gold market by uh, the Western Central Banks to uh, to keep the price down and keep the value of their own currencies up. You know, and, and, and the bottom line is that you guys are fighting the good fight. There's no doubt about it. What else do you think has to be done? Well, by everyone I think listening uh, here, probably by listening. Uh, most of all, Tom, uh, investors in the precious metals have to realize that if they do not take delivery of their gold and silver and remove their gold and silver from the uh, custodianship of the banking system, Yes. then they don't really own the gold and silver right. at all. The, right. the uh, investment banks, the bullion banks that purport to sell gold and silver realized long ago that since most uh, monetary metals investors do not take delivery uh, of the gold and silver they buy, the investment houses can sell five, ten, a hundred times more gold than they actually have possession of. This has uh, vastly inflated what the world considers to be its uh, supply of uh, the monetary metals. Um, and as long as people, uh, gold and silver investors, are content to purchase imaginary gold right. and leave this imaginary gold in the custody of the bullion banks, uh, then the uh, uh, the price of the monetary metals will never rise to match the inflation in the of the world uh, money supply. So uh, the, the one thing I think that that monetary metals investors have to do uh, is take their purchases out of the banking system to take delivery sure. of them in their own homes or to uh, uh, to vault them uh, in uh, in private vaults or to purchase metal through. Uh, vaulting services like uh, uh, gold money is uh, is my own favorite, but you've got to take delivery of your metal. If All you right. don't take delivery of your metal, if you don't take it out of the banking system, then you haven't really bought it at all, and you've really just given your money uh, to a financial institution that is working to cheat you.
Well, that and, and there's, a, there's a perfect case just recently because uh, anyone that owned the uh, you know the futures contract or gold at MF Global, uh, they might get seventy percent of it or they might get nothing. I sure, mean, yeah, um, that, that's a perfect you know, people, situation. There are people who thought that they they owned gold through MF Global and they have just discovered that they they didn't own anything. Now I'm not saying that people shouldn't, uh, uh, you know, trade in the market. No, 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 I, I understand that. Believe me, I understand that. Let me ask you, you know, when you started this 11 years ago, did you ever think, okay, and particularly, you know, you're, you're a journalist, you know, you, you get involved in, in, you know, the antitrust, did you ever think that this would open up like this? Oh, no, of course not. I mean, yeah. I had uh, very little idea of the, the financial markets, and uh, I uh, did not have... Uh, any knowledge of the very long history of the U.S. government in uh, rigging yes. the gold market. I mean, this this used to be done in the open, Tom. I mean, right. The gold standard, uh, you know, was uh, one method of, uh, of rigging the gold price. The price of gold was fixed to uh, uh, a certain number of, uh, of dollars. It was, you know, $35 an ounce for a long time. And now in the uh, 1960s, up to, uh, I believe, April 1968, um, the United States and, and Bank of England and uh, I think eight or nine Western European central banks uh, operated openly in something called the London Gold Pool, which was a scheme of dishoarding of Western central bank gold reserves through the London gold market. Uh, it was undertaken to hold the U.S. dollar gold price at $35 an ounce. That was done in the open. Uh, it was a central bank, western central bank scheme undertaken in the open to keep the gold price at $35 an ounce by uh, coordinated disfording of the gold reserves. You know, that you, you blew make... up in 1968 when uh, gold offtake uh, became too great yes. and the, the U.S. Uh, had uh, uh, disordered uh, its gold reserves from something like 24,000 tons to uh, uh, almost uh, 8,000 tons. The U.S. was about to lose uh, the very last bit of its gold and so it called called off the London gold pool. But my my point is, Tom, this rigging of the gold price has been U.S. government policy for more than 50 years. And for most of that time, it was public record and acknowledged. Now it is public record. It's just not acknowledged. No, you make a great point. And folks, please get the paper. It's under breaking news. You know, you go over to Gata, you know, send them some bread. Well, you read the paper and make your decision, folks. You know, the, the point that I love that you just brought up, it's just common sense. The, the central banks come in and they say, okay, we're going to intervene, you know, the Swiss franc, we're going to intervene in the dollar, we're going to intervene in the yen, we're going to... And they're so scared of saying that they're going to intervene in gold that they just don't do it. And right, they, that, they intervene openly in, in yes. many markets. Uh, it's just uh, they do not acknowledge doing it in gold. However, uh, we did get an admission uh, the other day out of Paul Volcker, uh, the famous former Fed chairman, that, uh, uh, he, that that he would justify intervening in the gold market at what he called critical points. And in fact, in his uh, uh, memoirs, uh, which have not really been published in the United States, apparently only in Japan, he recalls a uh, big international currency revaluation back in 1973, uh, where he uh, he writes that unfortunately uh, intervention in the gold market uh, to keep the price down was not undertaken. So, if you look closely uh, through the documents, and even if you you uh, catch a central banker and put a straight question to him uh, these days, you may find him admitting that yes, they. Uh, they do uh, intervene in the gold market from time to time precisely for the reasons that GATA has laid out uh, to uh, support their own currencies. And, and the larger issue, you know, we, when we wrap it all up, the larger issue is the United States of America, the Constitution, freedom, right? Yeah, we're, we're after free and transparent markets so that, you know, if uh, uh, investors are... Uh, uh, able to know what's going on on the same terms as, as everybody else. You know, when the U.S. government is intervening in markets through intermediaries, the intermediaries, the big investment banks in New York, have a huge advantage. They're taking their money. Listen, Chris, thank you so much. Look forward to having you back again. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Go to our website at TFNN under breaking news, folks. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or 